Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we talked about the anterior compartment of the thigh and talked extensively about the quadriceps muscle group. So this right here is a cross section of the thigh taken approximately halfway down the length of the femur. And we can see several important things here. So first of all, this right here is a cross section of the femur itself. Then we have several quadricep muscles here. So this one would be rectus femoris. This one is vastus lateralis. This one is vastus medialis right here, and then deep to rectus femoris, we have vastus intermedius. So those are the four major quadricep muscles. However, those are not the only muscles that are in the anterior compartment. There is one other that's extremely important, and that is the sartorius muscle. In general, the sartorius lies medial to the vastus medialis muscles you can see right here. And like the other muscles in the anterior compartment, the sartorius is also innervated by the femoral nerve, just like the quadriceps muscles. However, the big difference between the sartorius and the quads is that the quads participate in knee extension. They're the agonists of this movement, whereas the sartorius does not participate in knee extension. In fact, it has a variety of functions that are very different than that. And that's what we're going to be looking at in the coming slides. Before we get into all this detail right here, let's talk a little bit about the structure of the sartorius muscle. So what we're looking at here is an anterior view of the right lower extremity. Specifically, this is the right thigh. And in green here, you see the sartorius, which is actually the longest muscle in the human body. Very long, spans all the way from the ASIS up here proximally down to the tibia distally. Now, if we look at this picture, we can see several important structures. Uh, number one, this is the rectus femoris right here. Over here, this is the vastus lateralis muscle. Over here is vastus medialis. Up here you see tensor fasciolata, which actually shares an origin with sartorius. And then this muscle right here, which is sort of perpendicular to sartorius, this is the adductor longus. And the reason I point that out is one of the structural features of the sartorius is that it actually forms one of the walls, or boundaries I should say, of the femoral triangle. So over here, sartorius makes up the lateral boundary. AD ductor longus is the medial boundary, and then not shown right here would be the inguinal ligament, which makes up the superior boundary. And so this femoral triangle is just an anatomical reference area that contains some important structures that we'll talk about in another video, but sartorius is the lateral boundary of that. But in any case, here's probably the stuff that you came to this video for. So the origin of the sartorius muscle is the anterior superior iliac spine, the ASIS right here, and as I mentioned, the tensor fascia lata, part of its origin, is also the ASIS, so they actually share that origin right there. And we can follow the sartorius down, and its distal attachment all the way down here is actually what we call the pes anserinus or pes anserine tendon. The pes anserinus tendon or pes anserine is really a shared attachment point or a common tendon for three muscles that all attach right here. One of them is sartorius. We also have the hamstring muscle semitendinosus, which would be on the back side, we can't see it. And then this muscle right here, uh, the most medial of the adductors, this is gracilis. This one actually goes directly vertical down and also inserts on that pes anserine tendon. So it's really just a shared attachment point on the supramedial tibia. Okay. Now, because the sartorius muscle is in the anterior compartment of the thigh, it shares the same innervation as the quadriceps, and that's the femoral nerve, which has roots L2 through L4. But the big difference between the sartorius and the quadriceps is in the action. The quadriceps mainly facilitate knee extension. The one exception is rectus femoris, which does knee extension and hip flexion. Now the sartorius is what we sometimes call the Faber muscle. You'll hear this term Faber quite a bit. Faber is an acronym for flexion, that's the F, abduction, that's the AB, and external rotation is the ER, so Faber. And it performs Faber at the hip. So that means the sartorius, when it contracts, it can facilitate hip flexion, 
hip abduction or abduction, and hip external rotation. And so we can actually see the action of the sartorius, this hip faber, right here in this image, where this guy is crossing his left leg over his right. And to accomplish this, he has to have hip flexion, a little bit of hip abduction. Some people, when they cross their leg, their hip would actually be out a little bit more like this. He doesn't have a whole lot of abduction, uh, but most people actually probably would. And then external rotation. And again, how can we tell that his hip is externally rotated? Well, in this position, his knee is external to his foot, okay, in terms of the left leg. So this is flexion, abduction, and external rotation at the hip. And so sometimes we actually call the sartorius the Faber muscle, but that Faber refers to movements only at the hip. Now, the sartorius is a two-joint muscle. Uh, it crosses the hip joint, obviously, but it also crosses the knee joint because it inserts on the pes anserine tendon on the superomedial tibia. And so it does allow some knee joint movements. Now, the sartorius is not a major agonist of knee joint movement. Those would obviously be the hamstrings, the quadriceps, and so forth, but it can assist with knee flexion and also tibial internal rotation or medial rotation of the tibia. And sometimes with the sartorius, I've also called it the seat belt muscle because of the way that it starts laterally and it ends up going across the thigh medially. And so it kind of forms a seat belt over the meat of the thigh. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the sartorius muscle. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.